A bus driver was shot and killed in the downtown Nassau area. Candidates across the country nominated for the next general elections. And Bahamar opened its doors, finally, but not without major controversy. We've got all those stories and more. Stay tuned. It's the Tribune's Top 5. The shooting death of a dive tour bus driver in the downtown Nassau area has brought the country's homicide toll to 45. The incident occurred on Thursday and it follows the violent killing of three people over the Easter holiday weekend. The victim, identified by friends as Hans Neely, was a transportation supervisor at Storts Cove and was driving a bus while being chased. When he reached the downtown area around 7 a.m., the suspects pulled in front of him and fired shots at him, police said. The shooting occurred at East Street North near Prince George Wharf, an area that is usually populated by tourists, cruise ship passengers, and downtown shoppers. The Senior Assistant Commissioner Stephen Dean said the suspect or suspects had been trailing the man for some time. Hans' death comes exactly one month after his brother, Anthony Spy Neely, who was also gunned down while at work. Anthony was shot and killed in front of his co-worker at the construction site of the post office on Tonique William Darling Highway. Police say they do not have any motive for either brother's death and could not rule out the possibility that the two deaths were linked. Nassau Village's incumbent MP Dion Smith came under scrutiny this week when documents obtained by the Tribune indicated that he had owned a BMW vehicle valued at $30,000. The vehicle had been reported stolen from a rental company in Florida. The car was tracked down to an East Bay Street condominium property where Mr. Smith lives and the BMW 328i bore a New Providence license plate but did not have a license disc affixed to its windshield, according to leaked documents obtained by the Tribune. The revelation raised questions about how a stolen vehicle was licensed without proper paperwork displaying its ownership. Mr. Smith, the deputy speaker of the recently dissolved House of Assembly, could not be reached for comment despite numerous attempts by the Tribune to contact him. However, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts confirmed to the Tribune that he spoke to Mr. Smith about the issue several weeks ago after learning about the rumors concerning the matter. According to Mr. Roberts, Mr. Smith had told him that he had bought the car from a local bank whose identity has been withheld by the Tribune. Well, it's off to the election races as candidates this week nominated for 38 constituencies across the country. The general election has been called for May 10th. By law, nomination day cannot be earlier than the fifth day nor later than the tenth day from when public notice of an election is given. Nominees must deposit $400 to be nominated, and that money will be reimbursed if nominees win at least one-sixth of the vote in their constituencies. They must also declare their knowledge or estimation of their assets, income, and liabilities. The day could prove to be an historic one as Prime Minister Perry Christie declared that his nomination for Seneville marked his final bid for that constituency. The Bahama Mega Resort opened its doors for its heavily anticipated soft launch on Friday. Addressing invited guests at the ribbon cutting ceremony, Prime Minister Perry Christie was adamant that the resort opening was not a mirage or a trick, but the most significant economic development event to ever occur in the country and the Caribbean region. Mr. Christie said that the opening of the Grand Hyatt was more than a dream come true, but the unfolding of a bold vision that he led his administration in undertaking with the private sector more than 10 years ago. The remarks came during a ribbon cutting ceremony followed by a lavish reception in honor of the first phase opening of the West Bay Street Resort. The event also saw Bahama employees line the walkway of the resort, greeting invi invited guests as they arrived. Bahama was originally scheduled to open at the end of 2014. It was delayed because of the resort's original developer, Sarkis Million, filing for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the United States in June 2015. He eventually lost control of the $3.5 billion mega resort after legal wrangling in the U.S. and in the Bahamas. Despite the event, to celebrate the opening of the massive hotel, many of the retail outlets remain closed. The official date for guest reservations is scheduled for May 29th. After rebuffing questions about his dealings with Bahamar earlier this week, Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald has admitted that he sought contracts from the resort's developer for his family's business. The explosive revelation, first published in the Tribune, has stunned many and ignited serious discourse over a conflict of interest and whether the minister has breached cabinet procedure. Responding to the Tribune's revelation that he had requested lucrative brokerage, trucking and limousine contracts from Bahamar, Mr. Fitzgerald said he had communicated with Bahamar's original developer, Sarkis Ismailian, on a number of matters over the past eight years, either in person or by email. 
He explained that his father had been engaged in discussions with Mr. Ismailian, and after his father became ill, the Marathon incumbent MP said he wrote to Sarkis himself to follow up on the discussions and seek assistance. Mr. Fitzgerald said nothing came of his appeal and underscored that he did not hold shares in his father's company. He also maintained that he did not hold any contracts with the resort. However, some observers accused Mr. Fitzgerald of a breach of the Manual of Cabinet and Ministry Procedure, which states in Clause 40B that a minister must not solicit or accept any benefit, advantage, or promise of future advantage, whether for himself, his immediate family, or any business concern or trust with which he is associated from persons who are in or seek to be in any contractual or special relationship with the government. Prime Minister Perry Christie has remained silent on the matter, telling reporters at the resort's soft launch on Friday that he was not speaking to the issue at this time. When asked to respond to calls for his resignation, leveled by Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis, Mr. Fitzgerald told reporters at the Bahamas' soft launch that he had no intention to resign. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's how you can. Like us on Facebook, the Tribune News Network. Send us a tweet at Tribune242. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tribune242 or log on to our website, tribune242.com.